Hello Redstoners, it's Crabload Studios here. Well, I haven't done a video in a really long while, it's probably because I've been busy with with a friend's server setting thing. And it's a long story, really. Well, I'm back now. And here's what I've done. Um, it's basically a pulse container, or I guess you could call it a pulse safe. Um, you input any length of a pulse into this blue block, and it saves it into this, I don't know, called memory, I guess. Um, and when you uh, put an, a redstone pulse into this green block, it releases uh, the pulse the same length as you input it through this uh, red block right here, which marks as the output. And so let me just demonstrate it. Okay, that, as you can see, it's like looping around infinitely that's the length of a button pulse right there and if I press a green button there you go the length of a button pulse um, now the reason that this was kind of hard to make was that you had to take a lot of things into consideration um, for instance imagine the pulse being halfway through like at this position right here and then me pressing the green button that would open uh, this block um, I mean this block and it would release the pulse shorter than it really is which would be a problem that's why it's all the there was all this extra shit right here uh, this thing is the thing that actually keeps it from doing that um, since when there's no power at this block the piston is extended and if it's extended then this one can extend. But if there is power, so considering the pulse is in midway through this block, this piston is contracted and does not allow this one to um, to push out. Uh, yeah, that was the first problem. The second problem uh, was that the pulse, when it was here, um, like just going through, ending here, not being in this block anymore, that piston would extend um, causing this one to retract and losing the pulse before making one more loop uh, for going to the output and that would just not create an output of any kind just stay blank forever um, or at least the length of the pulse between this block and the start or whatever it wouldn't work correctly so that's why this repeater is right here keeps this piston extended if there's power over here uh, now I know what you're thinking. If, the, if there's power at this block, why is this one extended? The pulse could just be ending here. That would not affect the piston. Well, it actually would. Since there's a redstone torch here that powers this one. So that's one tick of delay from that. Which puts us already at, that, at this repeater. And there's this repeater here going to this piston. Which puts us right here. Now, um, the one tick delay of piston extension doesn't matter since this piston is already extended before you press that button. So it doesn't take one tick for it to extend since it's already doing that. Well, uh, I actually did some um, compressing on this design. As you can see where the gray wool is, that was the size of the old design, which is pretty fucking huge. Um, yeah, anything important? Yeah, this is important. Um, putting a pulse into this green block must be over two ticks long. Now, let me explain why. This is monostable circuit. This is an output. Uh, this will create a one tick output, which will just do that. Not toggle that torch on or off. Not toggle that torch on or off. Anything like that. Let's try two ticks. Now, this looks like it's working, but as you can see, this torch wasn't toggled, so the wire isn't actually doing anything, it's just a graphical glitch. As you can see right here, the repeater does not turn off. Um, okay, that's about it. All the white blocks aren't actually part of the actual circuit. Um, the size of the orange area is, I guess, pretty small for this kind of project thing, maybe? Well, as I said, the pulse can be any length between 1 tick and 23 ticks, since this is a 2.3 second long loop. It has 23 repeaters in it. Uh, but the button pulse, I just keep it there, so, you know, simple, I guess.
if you get really, really, really unlucky, you will have to wait for about, I guess, 10 ticks for this to light up, since you could get it so that um, when it's looping around, it just loops to here, so that it ends right at this piston when you uh, press the green button, uh, which would cause it to uh, make a whole loop before it gets to that. And that would take some more time, but I guess you have 10 ticks of time. You have one second of time, don't you? Well, if you don't, then I, I guess you don't need this. Um, I was figuring out why would you need this anyway, and I guess that it would be great for time combination logs. So that you have to input a correct amount of uh, time, so ranging from 0 to 23. If you get it right, it does something. It's like, I don't know, like digits on a wall from 1 to 9. You have to um, create the sum and then press, I don't know, confirm. And pressing confirm would actually activate this thing, which would release the output and, I don't know, test it if it's the right length and some crazy stuff. Well, the download link to this uh, world save is going to be in the description. Uh, now, the coordinates are... Um, okay... should probably write them down. Well, I think you can see it now. They're X minus 1400 and Z 770. Yeah, you can just ignore everything else in here. It's just, I don't know, random TNT experiments. This looks like a shrine to here, man. Well, never mind. Um, just random holes. Just don't mind that. Just some random experiments. Well, um, looking forward to the replies, you guys, and see you later.